Yes, ma'am. Uh, the Golden Hustler. That's the one I read. But I read okay. it a while ago. So I got to go okay. back to Nina and see what she was up to back then. Because I read that right out of high school. So. Amazing. And you know there's a part two to that. So now you got something yeah. good to read this summer. Read, yeah. read part one and then just grab part two. Yes. And I'm, I'm one of those people. Sometimes I grab them like out of order. So then I got to go back mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. start from scratch. Understood. So welcome to the Cape Dish Podcast, officially, Miss Wahida Clark. You know, it's it's so funny, like, I, I get to interview you, and I've read and heard about you from, like, a middle schooler. Like, my mom and God mom have these big bookshelves, and Wahida Clark, Wahida Clark, it's just all everywhere. <laughs> so, that is amazing. It is. It is just amazing. It's like a full circle moment because in the yes. urban fiction, you know, genre, we have like our Beyonce's that, you know, we look up to. So you're definitely one of those people for a lot of us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much. So I kind of, I want to go back a little bit to the beginning when you, you first started way back in 2002, when you released uh, Thugs and Women Who Love Them. Now, did you know that that book was going to just blow up? Did you have any idea? Um, yes, I did. Because my the, the intent, my intentions when writing it, uh, it, I wrote it at a time my back was behind the wall. Mm -hmm. Pun intended, because I was behind the wall. I was incarcerated. <laughs> Both of my teenage daughters, they were out there with relatives. My husband was incarcerated. And I needed to do something to make some money because in the federal prison system, it costs money to live there. I needed money to send home to my daughters and to my husband. And I needed to set something up for when I got out of prison eventually. I had a nine and a half year prison sentence. And I, I, you know how it is coming out from prison with a job, trying to get a job. So right. I said, I have to have something to sustain me right. from the prison to when I got home. Um, but what I didn't anticipate was uh, all of the books and seven, the, the, the Doug series has seven books. The Payback series have four books. Yes. Of course, I got to deal with cash money content. So now that, all of that was uh, unforeseen, but I knew what I was writing, when I was writing it, this was gonna be something. Wow. So let me ask you, because you did spend some time in prison. Do you think that like if you never would have went to prison, do you think you would have got into writing as heavily as you did? No, ma'am, not at all. It wasn't my intention. I didn't know how to write. I never thought about writing a book. Mm -hmm. Like I said, once I got in there and I see that I needed money, um, I prayed. I said, what can I do right now to make money? to sustain me and uh i picked up a vibe or a source magazine and there was an article in there of shannon holmes and it said that he was in prison and he had written a book called be more careful and at the time my job was the librarian so mm -hmm. i was sitting in the library by myself and i'm like wow in the prison in the prison library mm -hmm. and i said wow this dude wrote a book and he's in prison so I'm sitting there and I'm looking at all the books on the bookshelves. And I'm like, wow. And that's when I had my light bulb moment. I'm saying, I'm going to write me a book. <laughs> so how were you able to publish it from prison? Like, did you have any help? Like, how did that come together? Great question. Um, you know, after, after that prayer, of asking, what am I going to do? I need something right now, Lord. I need something right now. Mm -hmm. um, and once I, uh, he showed me to write, mm -hmm. I, the, uh, the, the prison camp administrator, she had gave another lady the, uh, the approval to set up a creative writing class for the inmates. 
And um, but before I signed up for that creative writing class and I got the, the guidance to write, I just started writing. I, my husband said, you have to, you want to make money off your books. You got to write some stuff like Donald Goins, Iceberg Slim. You got to write some good stuff like that, some right. street stuff. So I just got started writing. I didn't even know how to write. I just knew that's what I had to write. Mm -hmm. And the story came, the characters came. I took the creative writing class that the young lady, she was an inmate. Her profession on the streets was a literary agent. So right. she gave the creative writing class and she told you, she told us what to do um, mm -hmm. as far as getting your book sold and doing the query letters and all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I just did everything. And um, it was just, the timing was just right because uh, what Sister Soldier was out with the coldest winter ever. I had just read mm -hmm. Sister Soldier. Um, and I, I it was just, it, the timing was perfect. One night, like one or two o'clock in the morning, I was reading this book by Carl Weber called Married Men. And at the end of the book, I closed the book shut and I'm like, oh my gosh, this was so good. So mm -hmm. I said, let me write Carl Weber because I had noticed in a bunch of the acknowledgements, people was giving him shout outs. Right. So I wrote him a letter called, I just finished Married Men. You are one of my favorites. I really enjoyed it. And by the way, um, I'm in prison, serving a nine and a half year federal prison sentence. And I've written a book. I'm thinking about self-publishing it, um, but I don't know what I'm going to do. Give me some suggestions. Mm -hmm. And I mailed him the letter, forgot all about it, not even thinking he was going to write me back. Mm -hmm. He wrote me back and told me to send him the manuscript. So that's how I got my publishing deal. Wow. So when you sent him the manuscript, were you nervous at all that maybe he would run off with it or maybe, you know, he would kind of take it or you just had faith in him? Nope, not that didn't even cross my mind. My my challenge was getting it because it was hand had wrote the whole book on yellow legal paper. Right. So my problem was getting it typed up. Right. So I had to and then in in the in the uh creative writing class, the, the teacher, the instructor said Never send your only copy. You got to keep one copy. So the inmate copy machine was always broken. So I'm like, how am I going to get copies out? So I would ask the guards. I would ask the kitchen employees. I would ask the guidance counselor. Anybody, please make some copies for me so I can send this home so my family can type it up. And then look, after the book got published, look, at, when they was making the copies, they would say, okay, I'll make the copies for you, Miss Clark but you just better give me a shout out in the acknowledgements. You better shout me out. I said, I got you. Just make the copies so I can send this, send it home. Right. But look, right. after the book got published and I gave him a shout out in the acknowledgements, mm -hmm. I got in trouble because the lieutenant called me over there. They said, why you got the, first of all, how did you get this book published while you're in prison? And wow. second of all, why you got all the guards and the, the personnel listed? So I said, well, I was able to get it published because you guys gave a creative writing course. I took the class. I graduated from it. I got the certificate. I did everything the instructor said do, and I got published. I said that the officer's names, your, your personnel's name are in the book because they said, okay, we're going to make the copies, but just give me a shout out. So mm -hmm. I gave them a shout out like I, pro like I promised them I would do. So I got put in a hole for doing that they put me in a hole to investigate um because they said did you it was money exchange i said no no money was an exchange they just wanted me to give them a shout out and i just like i said the inmate copy machine raggedy copy machine was always broken and so that's what i did so i i got in trouble for that and spent nine and a half months in the hole and then i got shipped from kicked out of lexington federal prison to um August in West Virginia and that's when I met Martha Stewart wow so reading uh meeting Martha Stewart I read that she read your business plan yes right before she was going home like two nights before I said Martha you got to check out my business plan because I'm going to start my own publishing company mm -hmm. uh check out my business plan so she said bring it to the library because mm -hmm. you know I'm out of here so uh give it to me I look it over tonight I um, met, met at the library gave it to her next day she gave it back gave me her feedback and that was that do you remember I, I, go ahead say it again 
Do you remember the feedback she gave to Oh, you? absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I remember it. It's uh I don't say it a lot. The main thing was um, to protect yourself. And a lot of the inmates that, because um, I told a lot of the inmates are sending me manuscripts. That's another reason I got in trouble in Alderson. Once, um, when I was in the hole, which was the county jail for the federal prison camp, mm -hmm. um, I was able to send out uh, flyers about my book to other prisons. Mm -hmm. So... When I got to Alderson, my books was out all over the place. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the inmates was like, whoa, this girl wrote a book. I can do it too. So they start sending me manuscripts. So that's why I said I got to start my own publishing company. But the prison there, they said I was running a business. And I couldn't run a business in the prison because I was getting all this mail, all of these manuscripts. Contracts was coming in. Contracts was going out. So I got in trouble again. Oh wow! So um, yes, yeah, so that was one of the things she said that a lot of the inmates, you know, they have the um, that law about the victim. So she said you're going to have to be careful uh, with that. But yeah, that's one of the tips that she had gave me. Wow! So with the uh, with the inmates sending you manuscripts, did you get? I guess did you get any inspiration from the inmates that you were that you were um, living with while you were incarcerated with? Did any of them try to like help you with your books at all <laughs> now while i was locked up i i had a, i was in the habit of writing a book on legal yellow paper in mm -hmm. lexington and alderson mm -hmm. some of the inmates they would be mad and went, like i remember one girl d she worked in the kitchen so she would be up at five o'clock in the morning getting ready to go to the kitchen i like d you got to read this so she was like wahida i'm so sick of you so yes i would give my manuscript <laughs> to the ladies to read what you, they was my they was my my tests right but it, that was my market test <laughs> right. so, yeah. absolutely so speaking of prison i saw you reposted a uh, bird man when he went to the prison and he kind of kind of downplay literature a little bit um you know as a writer who got your start in prison like how did you feel about his speech or seeing that i i i don't know i would have to see the whole speech because mm. like i said in my post i said birdman he has a publishing company right i'm his pup i'm his author right i have four three new york times bestsellers under cash money content I remember him reaching out to me, calling me and saying, why he just, please sign these books, send them. His brother was locked up. So I had to sign books and send them to him for his brother. So I have to get the whole contest because I know he didn't mean it like that. Not somebody right. that has a publishing company. He published the heavy hitters, yes. myself, um, Ashton Jaquavis, Treasure Blue. Did he publish Quan? Quan. He published the heavy hitters in the genre. Raw Law, he published the heavy hitter. So I definitely, I I, I would have to get the contents of it. And Birdman, when you see this, hit me up because I sent you guys an email. <laughs> yes, he caught a lot of, he caught a lot of flack for that, but I'm with you. I, I think we got to see the full, the full. Yeah, book. yeah. I, I also know that, yes, he does publish as well. So I'm like, I don't think he meant it that way. But... No, it, it, he couldn't have, he couldn't have. So I, I love how you, with your own publishing company, how you really uplift your writers, like going through your Instagram, it's not all about you at all. Like you post, you know, your drama boy and your Amelia, how do you choose which writers you're going to get behind? Uh, their tenacity and drive and hustle mm -hmm. and understanding that the book is a business is you just don't write a book and give it to a publisher and kick back and think the dollars are going to roll in it right. doesn't work like that you got to hustle you have to grind um so that's how we pick our authors mm -hmm. now have you ever had to turn a writer away oh absolutely remember i've been i came home in 2007 i started the publishing company in 2008 I received so many manuscripts. I received so many authors and some because of their personalities and 
some I wish I had it turned away. Um, right. uh, but you know, it's it's a learning process. Mm -hmm. Now, yep. the... I still turn down offers to this day. I still have because you can't publish everybody, and right. and now my business model, our business model has changed. So mm -hmm. again, we look for the hustlers and the grinders and people that understand that your book is a business, and you use your book to open up doors and get bigger things. Mm -hmm. So how do, cause you made a really good point. Some, I think some writers do kind of think that they're just going to put out a book and the money is just going to start flowing in. Right. So Man. how do you keep your writers like uh, motivated to keep going when, you know, they don't really see, they don't really see it paying off just yet. Well, again, it goes to picking the right ones because the ones you write with intention. Well, he I got this book. I want to put this out because of AD. They got to have a, a, a motive. They got to have a, a reason to write the book. Uh, end game. So you, you, when you team up with those type of authors, you really don't have to motivate them. You just got to provide the, the structure, the foundation, so that they can do the work that they need to do. So we, that was a learning process. But I've learned now how to pick and choose um, who I um, publish. Now, which one? And plus, lead by example. I try to lead by example as well. Oh, you definitely do that. <laughs> you definitely do that. I love how you continuously promote your books. Like, if you go on your Instagram, you promoted, I just seen recently around Valentine's Day, a book from 2015. And people would think that was a new book, the way that you continue right. just to push all your books like there's no this is the new and these are the old it's like you just push them off so amazing that is really inspiring well, that's what i like about books they can always be regenerated repurposed and that's what i like about publishing um mm -hmm. it never gets stale to me and it's always interesting to see what a person comes up with what they write what what is their intention that's just i guess that's why i keep publishing because it's just so interesting to me Right. Now, with your own books between the Golden Hustler series, the Payback and the Thug series, which one would you think is your favorite series? Like, which was the most fun to write for you? Definitely the Thug series. Really? Hands down. Yep. Was it, is it because there are just so many different characters to create? Like, what was that process like? Um, that's a good question. Because it has to do with the characters, the way the story flowed, um, and having and, and actually I had so much fun writing, especially when I got into it. it just was so much fun writing. That series is just just near and dear to me. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think that you would make it into a movie? Yes, yes. We we've we've had several offers, mm -hmm. um, but we just we we prefer to. Uh, put it out or have the money to put it out ourselves so that we can, you know, maintain the creativity and maintain the intellectual property rights. Uh, lots of times when you do a movie, you, you sign it off. They give you the big bag up front. Yeah. And yeah. you go about your business. No, I want to, I want to be in it uh, with Tyler Perry, Oprah, right. Denzel, all of them say own your stuff. Intellect, keep hold on to your intellectual property. You know, try to do it yourself ownership 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 absolutely now which character from your book did you have the most fun writing and i know it's a lot <laughs> of characters to choose from <laughs> i know it's a lot a lot yeah because you know i got the thug series all of those characters okay. that's four couples <laughs> and then the, the, the the other people i bring into the thug series like kyron it was mad that i brought in kyron and he cheated tr tr Tasha cheated with him then I got the, the payback series those characters are crazy um but definitely the thug series I think the, the book that had the most fun writing I think was thug matrimony mm -hmm. I really enjoyed writing that book and that was with Angela Kaylin Trey and Tasha of course was in there but that book was just so fun it just just flows so effortlessly we just had the ball uh writing thug matrimony 
Now, if you if you did do the movie, would you try to combine all of the thug matrimony books, or would you just maybe pick out one and focus solely on that one? Oh my gosh, all of those books! That's a, <laughs> a, a series with a thousand episodes. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of lot of lot of uh, content. It is a lot, but we will watch. So <laughs> we will absolutely do it. Nice. So, will we ever get a maybe a Wahida Clark biopic just about your life and rise as an author? Absolutely, absolutely. Actually, we um we 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 already have the outline, the script. I even started a a book uh, just just sitting on the shelf. So, um mm -hmm. yes, we will eventually get that. Okay, so with twenty twenty four, I know we're kind of halfway done with the year, but. What is next for Miss Wahida Clark this year? Um, this year we 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 launched this uh app, Pen Talk app, where we're doing distribution for the prisoners on prison tablets. Okay. So we're fine-tuning that. We're talking to a diff a couple of different partners. Mm -hmm. Um we got a couple of new releases coming out. Oh, check this out. Speaking of new releases. Mm -hmm. My our new author. Um, well, we got London Winners coming with the potato chip pimp. Okay. We got Keely. Keely started reading my books. Um, I think she was like 10, 11, 12, 13 is <laughs> younger. So now she's grown. She's a teacher and she wrote a book. It's fan fiction, but she took one of my characters, Omar, and did a story based around him. So we got that coming out. That so is, that's going to be very interesting. That is again. exciting. Like, how does it feel to, after all these years, you still get people who are so invested in your characters that they want to make fan fiction of it? Like, you know, something that is, that is, 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 is I'm, I'm amazed by it. It, it is a blessing. It is a blessing to have that type of impact on uh, on on the genre. And we also have Little Wahida Publications, the children's book line, Yaya Publications with Uncle Yaya uh, for kids. So we we got a bunch of stuff coming up in the, for the publishing for two before the end of um, 2024. That is wonderful. So my last question for you, and I'm sure you've been asked this question a hundred times over but what is the one piece of advice you can give to up-and-coming authors specifically urban literature authors uh well urban literature because right now the the, the the market is so saturated so it's it's very hard to be unique and stand out among the crowd um amazon has what 60 million books on the platform so nowadays you have to get professional with it. You have to test your your concept, test your titles, test your cover. You have to do, you have to come, you have to bring it in order to stand out from the crowd. So that's something that we're we 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 we've learning and coming into. And we've been doing that with our new releases that we have. We got Easy Mo B also coming out, the legendary producer who produced Craig Mack. Um, wow. Buster Rhymes, Alicia Keys, Miles Davis. His, his 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 catalog is humongous. Mm -hmm. Um, so we we test the titles, and test the cover concept, mm -hmm. test the, the ads that you're going to use because you got to do a lot to stand out in the crowd because there's so much noise. You do so basically. But the good thing is. There's a new reader born every day. This is true. <laughs> and yep. that's, stay, that's the stay relevant. Yep. So basically just having a really good hustle. Yes, ma'am. And, and, and having a very good product. Good hustle and good product. And continuing mm -hmm. to push the product each and every day. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. We love that. Well, Miss Lahita Clark, I am so grateful that you took time on your Sunday to come kick it with the Cake Dish podcast. I cannot wait for people to see Thank it. You. 
I put it on Twitter and I have a lot of uh, readers on my Twitter and I was like, I think I'm going to interview Wahida Clark. And people were like, no way. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Ask her this. Ask her that. So you, you're very, very loved out here from the time I was little up until now. Like people just love you. Even when I was telling my mom, she was like, what? Wow. Tell your mother I said thank you for reading my books. We appreciate the support. Yes. Uh, and I, I'm I'm truly humbled and grateful and honored. And thank you so much. Thank you. Well, we look forward to seeing and reading everything. So I appreciate you. All right. Well, thank you so much.